Well, we're going to move on to a local issue that's uh, been happening. Uh, big news right in our own viewing area. The, if you went out and voted and you are in the South Washington County School District, there is a couple of ballot questions. And one of them is over $96 million if school district question one is approved. I'm reading right off the ballot, um, a photocopy of the ballot, not an official one. Um, Shall the school board of independent school district number 833 South Washington County Schools also be authorized to issue its general obligation school building bonds in an amount not to exceed $96 million to provide funds for the acquisition and betterment of school sites and facilities, including the acquisition of land for and the construction and equipping of a new middle school facility, the repair, renovation, remodeling, upgrading, equipping, and repurposing of the existing uh, Olman school, Middle School site and facility for use as an elementary school, and the construction of additions and improvements to other existing middle school sites and facilities. That's right off of ballot question number two from the South Washington County School District. And with me today, we do have a guest, is Andrea Mayer Brustel of the South Washington uh, Citizens for Progress organization, which to my understanding was going against the school referendum. Am I correct? Yes, we were the opposition group to the, to the referendum as a whole. Okay, well first of all, thank you for coming aboard. We really okay. appreciate you here today. Thanks for having me. So what happened, well, there, there's really three ballot questions. Could you um, let us know exactly what happened with all three of these ballot, uh, ballot questions, just to get everybody who's not in South Washington County Schools uh, up to par? Sure. Um, the first question, which was a operating levy, uh, $10.3 million a year um, for 10 years, that one actually passed. Um, the second question, which you just read, uh, the $96 million, that one actually passed, but only passed by 19 votes. Wow. Um, and then the third pa uh, question, we actually managed to defeat. Um, and that was a $46.5 million bond for additions and, and r extra things for so the other schools. So all told, if all, of this w uh, if all of this passed, taxpayers for the South Washington County Schools were on the hook for what, about $150 million? It was $142.5 million for the bonds themselves and then yeah, about $100 million for the uh, operating levy when you add it up over the 10 years. Wow, so, so $250,000. Well, and, and more than that when you look at what the um, interest rates were going to be okay. or on the uh, bonds, I mean we're talking hundreds of millions yeah, of dollars. Yeah, $250 million. That's the thousand. Yeah, easily. $250 million. So we're dealing with a quarter of a billion dollars yeah. for South Washington County Schools alone. Wow. Yep. No wonder you guys are trying to get it voted no. <laughs> yes, it was, we worked very hard. And uh, we actually, the, in 2013, at the, there was a referendum and, and a school board member election at that time. And there was, a, I think our voter turnout was about 18%. This year we got a whole 24%, so we got an uptick of 6%. So, but it did, I mean, with the question two, it did come down to, you know, it passed by 19 votes, which was within the uh, percentage, I think it's a half a percentage. Yeah, the, um, for recount? Yeah, for a recount. So it went to recount. Um, in the process of the recount, it had, uh, they came up with one more vote for yes and two more votes for no and 19 contested ballots if we had um which made it that the if we had the the, the differential would be 18 for us to come to a tie which would automatically mean that it was defeated so on wednesday before thanksgiving it went before all the, 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 the ballots went before a, um, a canvassing board. Well, 19 ballots. 19 ballots went before the canvassing board. Who was on the canvassing board? The canvassing board, um, per state statute, they have a whole way it's set up, but the people on the canvassing board was uh, the, the school district chairman or school board chairman, um, Ron Kath, the school board clerk, uh, Katie. Schwartz, there's two Katie's, so I had to make sure I got that right. <laughs> um, and then we had three supposed to be independent um, people, and that was 
uh, the mayor of Woodbury, her designee, she was supposed to be there, but she wasn't. So she had Kim Blazer, who is the city clerk, and then the Washington County Auditor and the Washington T County um, Court Administrator. Okay. Um, so they sat down and we had um, attorney Eric Cardell came in and sent a big long letter and went through all the ballots. And so they went through the ballots and we, had, we, we actually withdrew one because we realized that that wasn't gonna be a challenge. And then for each ballot, he was able to speak for a minute as to why it mm -hmm. would be a no vote. And then the other side had their person and then you had the, the whole canvassing board. And then the school district had their own attorney too that apparently was able to speak whenever she wanted to. So. Wow. Yeah. So they went through and um, I don't know if you can, if you pull up the graphic for, I just wanted to just show a couple of things. Angie had sent me some, um, some, um, PDF files before the show began. And I have not had really a chance to look at them. So um, which one in particular? The, let's see. Let's do ballots uh, two and three. Two and three. That's a good example. Um, what this shows is the different things. Ballot exhibit number two. That is a, a ballot that the canvassing board decided was um, a non-vote. So it, it got tossed out basically. Okay. And ballot number three, they decided was a no vote. <laughs> so. So how did they figure that out? It took a while, but it, they parsed and split hairs and whatever. But what it really comes down to is they disregarded um, the statutes on voter intent throughout. We actually, these two ballots are, are a good example of um, 16 ballots out of those 19 where the people filled in the no, the O and the no. And um, they threw out three of those, but wow. kept all the other ones. And then if you go to ballot, um, let's see, it would be 18 and 19. Uh, 15 and 16. Oh, no, no, or 18 should have been on there okay, too. 18, yep. 18, they also threw out, and I put on there why what what uh, attorney cardell had written about and, and which statute it falls under okay so that would be ballot number 18 this is uh, attorney eric cardall's um words um ballot number 18 has the letters n and o in no filled out rather than the oval based on minnesota statute uh section 204 c.22 subdivision 6 Quote, if a mark X is made out of its proper place, but so near a name or space as to indicate clearly the voter's intent, the vote shall be counted. End quote. Here, the voter's intent is clearly indicated by the voter having filled the N and the O in no, which is so near no, to indicate clearly the voter's intent to vote no. It was obvious error for the election judges not to count ballot number 18, as a no vote and i'm going to try to enlarge the ballot itself i just read you the uh information yeah and that comes off the statute and um it you know clearly the n and the o <laughs> it's the voters intent's pretty clear there um but the canvassing board especially the two school board members were determined they repeatedly ignored the statutes um, so what did they they threw that one out they threw that one out yep that was one they decided didn't it, it was a non-vote wow yep so if our contention is is it comes down to one ballot and that is the 11 ballot which 11 which i actually have up here so again i'm going to read attorney eric cardall's uh words um, let me enlarge the words a little bit. You can read along with me. Ballot number 11 has both ovals filled in for question 2, but an X through the yes oval. Notably, the face of the ballot has three ovals filled out for candidates and has an oval filled out for no on question 3 and has similar markings on question 1 as to question 2. Both ovals filled in, but an X through the yes oval. Minnesota statute section 204C.22 subdivision 11 states on attempted erasures, subdivision 11, quote, attempted erasures, 
if the names of two candidates have been marked and an attempt has been made to erase or obliterate one of the marks, a vote shall be counted for the remaining marked candidate. Here, Cardall's words, the voter has attempted to obliterate the yes oval by drawing an X on it. Under these circumstances, subdivision 11 requires that the remaining marked oval for no be counted. It was obvious error for the election judges not to count ballot number 11 as a no vote. And here is ballot number 11. It's very tough to see, but there is an X over this and this that can be clearly seen uh, when you're looking at it at front. And to my understanding, was that a different pen or something that was used, or was it just... No, and actually, I mean, I haven't seen the, um, the original ballot, obviously. I, I didn't get to see that, but when the, there's some better copies than what we have up here, um, the, on the number two question, or question two, you can actually see that the oval was filled in, and you can see the X over the top. And that was an... O, uh, the X over the top of yes, yeah, and both the yes and the no ovals were filled in. Right, and so so you know, what did they do with this? They threw that one out. Too. They threw this one out. And so yeah, we believe that the you know the the this, the canvassing board repeatedly ignored the statutes and wow. basically disenfranchised these voters um, by saying that their votes didn't count. So the next step. I was just going to ask, what is the next step? <laughs> Sorry, I'm always right on the ball here. Hey, like uh, minds. The next step is to take it to court and yeah. go to district court um, and challenge the, it's a, a, a challenge the election or contest the election. Um, and we really do feel that it, it's really going to come down to that last ballot that I showed you. Um, and we believe, you know, that the voter intent was to vote no. If that is the case and we can win that, um, the voters and the, the citizens of District 833 will have been saved $96 million. So does that go to a district judge or an appellate judge? It would go to the district court first. Okay. And in order to do that, um, we, the, 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 the lawyer or the attorney, when they file the, the case, they have to put down a $5,000 bond. Wow. Um, to cover the court costs mm -hmm. and whatever, and if we win, you know, that will come back. And we can. Do it. We are in the process right now of raising this, and this is the thing. This happened, the, the canvassing board met on Wednesday. Thursday was Thanksgiving. Friday, Black Friday, I was out yeah. shopping, love it. Um, I get a phone call, okay, this is what has to be done, and we have to file on Tuesday. You get wow. seven days. Regardless of Thanksgiving, regardless that it's the weekend, we get wow. seven days. Um, so we are working very hard to raise the $5,000 so that this can go to a district judge and, and be heard there. Because we really believe that if it gets in front of a judge, that he will see the canvassing board and the recount mm -hmm. um, election judge, um, that they, they disregarded the statutes and that we should prevail. And if that happens, when that happens, um, it would be historic yeah. to have a $96 million bond. I mean, you're talking almost $100 million be, def be defeated on a tie for one ballot. Wow, so it was, by the way, where is that right now as far as how many ballots are away you know. The five that the five that I've shown you here, it's five. They the canvassing board threw out five. Okay. And so it had come down. We had 19 contested ballots. We withdrew one. The differential after the recount was 18 between the yes mm -hmm. and the no's. If we file and we win, that means that all 18 contest uh, challenged ballots, the exception of the one we withdrew from the 19, whatever. If we win, that means it's a tie. And any time it's a tie, it means it's defeated. Wow. Yes, it's so, huge. You know, there's always the, 
old saying about every vote counts. Oh, this is a case where every vote counts. Or it should count if the canvassing board was paying attention to voter intent. Or if the recount person was too. Or, or I have to tease my sister-in-law. She was at Thanksgiving dinner and she admitted she got out of, off work late and didn't vote. And I'm like, you are the one. Ouch. But we love her anyway. Okay, well, you forgave she, her on Thanksgiving. Totally, so. I forgave her. Well, I, I just have to tease hard. her. I bet that was hard. We had to tease her. <laughs> um, but so what we're doing is we're trying to um, raise this money. And on the screen there um, is the website or the, the email or the so email So if, you, if you can bring up my computer here, how to donate. Uh, by cash or check payable to South Washington Citizens for Progress Committee. And if you do that, you need to email me. So I can find you and we can get this because we need it by Monday afternoon. Contact Andrea at SWC4P2015 at gmail.com. Repeat that again. SWC4P2015 at gmail.com. Or on PayPal, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash SWC4P, and then click Donate at the top of the page to be taken to the PayPal donation page. And they do thank you for their support. Now, if you you got this, you miss it, we're just taking it down right now. If you couldn't write fast enough, we will be having this up on YouTube tonight, this episode, uh, youtube.com slash Oasis. So if you see it on the show, or if you happen to catch us on a rebroadcast uh, and, and you're not catching this live, uh, still, just go to you know, uh, facebook.com slash SWC4P. And trust me, even if they raise the $5,000, legal work is expensive. And if this gets drawn out beyond that $5,000 retainer, they're going to need more than $5,000 to get this through. So if you believe in this cause, that $96 million should not be assessed to South Washington County Schools taxpayers, then go and donate. Um, and again, we'll, we'll, let's just throw it back on the screen one last time. There it is. By cash or check payable to the South Washington Citizens for Progress Committee or email uh, and Andrea at SWC4P2015 at gmail.com or by PayPal through Facebook.com slash SWC4P. Then click Donate at the top of the page. And we will, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure Andrea and anybody else working on this would really appreciate your support. Again, if you, be, if, you, if you were a no voter and you may have been one of these uh, ballots that are in question and you can say, oh, geez, that was me, I didn't do it right. No, nobody needs to know that it's you, but if you really want to reconcile, <laughs> you know, going to Facebook and uh, sending your PayPal donation might be the right thing to do. And just so you know, I mean, if it's $5, if it's $10, is it $500? every little bit counts it all adds up and this is so important because the other thing is i mean this could be the first time this happens in minnesota where this kind of thing you know, where we are able to shut that down um and who knows what could happen in the future with uh, with referendums i live in uh district 622 maplewood north st paul oakdale school district and I actually missed one. Uh, I've actually missed two votes in my life. One was a primary election. I was out of town, and since the candidate that I was supporting on the ballot, there was really only one person, um, and was running unopposed. It was just happened to have been that the other party that I wasn't voting in that election, uh, they had a contested race. So that one I didn't mind missing quite as much. But then there was one school bond referendum that came up, and this is uh, about 20 years ago, 21 years ago. And I was voting against it. I wanted to vote against it, but then I was called out of town on personal business. Oh, no. I came back to town on election day at 8.05, and the polls closed at 8 o'clock. And there was not a long enough line for me to get into the back of, 
That referendum was voted down by 13 votes. That's wow. how razor thin that one was. The second referendum I voted in, and that one was defeated by 13 votes. And keep in mind, we're dealing with $90 million. I think mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the, the one that was defeated by, the first one that was defeated by 13 uh, votes, that was around 95 to $98 million. The second one, they said that we're going to save you money and they put an $85 million referendum. But tax pay taxpayers are still assessed on $85 million. It wasn't a savings. Money. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third one, they cut it down to 60. And then the big issue there was uh, rebuilding the North School. And so they kept it on the site. And that one passed. But, you know, okay, there was $30 million in savings according mm. to their budgeting process. But, uh, you know, really, you know, there's just a they lot They probably more. at least levied it anyway, which Pretty they can much. do without the vote. <laughs> but schools do need better fiscal control. You know, feeding them more and more money does not fix the lack no. of good fiscal control, does not teach students good budgeting. And I just want to wish you all the best and thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We'll see you next week.